it's good to see everybody. It feels like it was just yesterday we were uh, at the garden cutting down some nets. It's been a, a crazy, crazy three weeks for us, um, but we're right back to work. Um, guys been in already for individual workouts, strength and conditioning, getting caught up on our academics. Um, you know, they're excited. There's an excitement. There's an enthusiasm uh, amongst the players, but amongst Penn Staters. I mean, I was in South Carolina yesterday walking into a hotel, and they came right up and wanted to get pictures and selfies, and just, it's just awesome. They're everywhere. And they, uh, everybody seemed, it seemed like everybody watched it, which is, which is great um, to be able to beat some of the teams that we were able to, uh, to beat. So we're, we're in full 2018-2019 mode. Uh, recruiting is huge for this weekend and next weekend. And then, um, you know, guys will finish strong academically. And we're talking to Sandy after this. I think there was sort of an assumption that that had gotten settled. Do you have any sort of update on your future contractually? Um, yeah, you can ask Sandy this, but we're, we're still working out some things. We're just cleaning up some things, but it should be in the near future. Very soon. Let's just put it that way. Well, obviously, uh, you've uh, you've spoken to Coach Chambers, and and uh, I just you know from a Penn State athletic standpoint, from from my viewpoint and perspective as the athletic director, obviously uh, a season of great momentum, uh, really some great things uh, that happen, and what I'm most excited about is being able to take an NIT championship, uh, where we finished in the Big Ten. Uh, and, and take it and use it as momentum uh, for where we all want to go uh, from, uh, from a Penn State men's basketball standpoint, and, and that's to, to have an impact in the Big Ten, uh, to get into the NCAAs and, and make a run. So I'm really excited about the momentum that this year has given us and, and what our future holds. Ted said you guys are close on an extension. What, any update on that from your yeah, I mean, as you all can imagine, I don't think we've kept it any secret. We've been talking since the, the season's been over. Um, these things, not unlike some other uh, contract situations we've we've all uh, been involved in, uh, it, you know, they, they take on a life of their own. And, and uh, But we've had really good conversations, um, and I believe that we're, uh, we're close. But you, we'll make an announcement when, uh, when it's done. How do you deal with those sorts of conversations from the standpoint of when you've had a coach that's been in a place for a long time, has made the progress that you want to see, but you want to see it sustained and maybe not wait that number of years again to do it. How do you kind of negotiate a year number when it comes to sustaining, but still giving someone a reasonable sort of window to work with? Yeah, I think it's exactly as as you've just said. It's you know it's a discussion about where we are, where we think we can we can be. Uh, you know what Pat's done with this program, you know, he, he, de he deserves the extension um, that we're talking about. And um, uh, again, re real pleased with the, the momentum and the, the progress, uh, and w none of us, uh, particularly Coach Chambers, none of us think this is a, a you know, one uptick down, it, it, you know, this is, uh, we believe we're on an ascent. When you did the previous extension, um, what was your thought process at that time? Did you think you were still going to have to wait a few years to get where you needed to be at the time? Because over the last year, you've been very clear about where the program, where you wanted the program to be. So back when you did that, did you, were you investing, saying, listen, this is going to be a, a longer process, or a little bit of a long process? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the proper term there is, is, is investing and, and, and giving somebody who I had faith in um, time to, to do it. You know, none of us. None of us have a have a crystal ball and know exactly when that um, you know twenty six game win season <laughs> will 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 come. Um, but you see signs um, that that you can invest in and that you believe in. Um, and uh, you know there've been other coaches at Penn State that I've had that same faith. Just maybe piggybacking on that, do you uh, certainly from the fan perspective, NCAA is the one the one thing that just end all be all. Do you, do you take a broader perspective uh, than that, or do you do you benchmark and say this from here it has to go to there? Yeah, I don't. I don't take any. I don't take any exception or argument with the fact that the, the, the goal is the NCAA's, and 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 then ultimately the goal is not just making NCAA's, but it's it's uh, what I like to refer to as making some noise. You know, making making progress uh, through it. Um, you know, Pat and I completely agree on this, but this was a huge step. 
this was a huge step on our way to that. You made a significant statement when you um, extended James Franklin, not only in the extension, but in the amount of the extension. Are there certain things that you feel you have to meet in terms of where Pat is within the hierarchy of the Big Ten pay scale wise? Because I believe he's toward the bottom now, and do you think that he needs to be more you know, higher than that? Yeah, I mean that's gonna that's that's all based on on performance. It's based on on expectations and the ability to meet uh, those, um, and in in uh, and making steps towards that. Uh, I think is probably the, the proper characterization. And then maybe also to, to build on that, just the investment in the program. Obviously, um, you know we see the EA DA numbers, et cetera. Um, d does this year uh, provide any type of feedback in terms of how you make an investment in the program moving forward, even beyond coaches' salaries, but just an overall investment in the program. Yeah, I mean, we're constantly looking at that. I, I would caution all of us uh, from an EADA or any kind of benchmarking standpoint to um, those are, are typically um, comparing apples to grapefruits sometimes. Um, and I'm not sure who's grapefruits and who's oranges or apples. Um, but uh, it's our job and, and my job to always take a look at what, what do we need? What do we need to compete? Um, and those are the kinds of things we're examining every day. Because again, the goal is uh, to, to compete in the Big Ten, uh, be a factor in the Big Ten race, uh, and get to the NCAAs. Uh, and, and so, how are we going to resource that? W what is that proper resource level? I'm not as worried about what's going on in other places, because again, you don't really know what those numbers mean. Who pays rent? Who doesn't pay rent? Who pays this or, or that? Or what's included, what's not included? I don't put a lot of stock in those numbers.